guys, welcome back. This is M.I. Schloss, Life According to Maria. And in this episode, we are going to be talking about what a professional photographer should be wearing at that all-important event. So stay tuned. Hey guys and welcome back. I hope that you're enjoying my videos and today it's going to be kind of informal, a little bit of a chat on uh, my opinions and of course my experience as a professional photographer and what I have found to be successful and not so successful in wearing as a female, of course, not as a male. Uh, they do have their own set of uh, do's and don'ts for what to wear and what not to wear for a photo shoot or a photo event. Um, but this is geared to the females. Um, a lot of moms out there are what I call mammographers. They're moms, but they do part-time photography. They do a lot of photography with kids. They do photography for wedding events and all kinds of um, other, you know, events. It could be even corporate events, traveling, whatever. Um, this is geared more to the uh, customer facing photographer okay this is not really geared to the photographer that is doing um, kind of like art photography out in the woods um, you know in the national parks outdoors that's a whole set of other paraphernalia do's and don'ts as far as gear um, what to wear obviously for safety reasons too outside as far as hiking and all that. But this is geared more to the customer facing event where you are hired as a photographer, female photographer, to go and cover this event. And there are a lot of um, people there. There are, it could be employees of a company. It could be family reunion. It could be a wedding. It could be a bar mitzvah. It could be a number of events. But the main thing that you want to concern yourself with is that uh, people that are paying you and their guests will be uh, watching you okay so that's the that's the premise that's what I want to um, put forth okay because what you do how you act how you behave what you wear um, is all basically scrutinized there's no other way around it and if you are not dressed appropriately if you fumble and stumble and do something crazy, guess what? You're not going to be rehired again. So the main thing to take away from this video, if if nothing else, is how to basically come across as a very professional uh, female photographer that is dressed appropriately for that event. And by appropriate by appropriately, well I can't talk, by appropriately I mean not only do you come across as professional but you are dressed for safety, safe reasons uh, while you're walking around and doing things and photographing stuff, okay? So let's get into it. I've taken some notes, some touch points so that I can talk to you guys about it, okay? Um, the first thing that you want to do uh, is wear appropriate uh, top and a bottom, okay? Um, if you are in the service industry, and you will know this, a lot of service personnel dress in dark clothing, either navy blue or black, okay, such as this. It is just because it shows that they are professional. There's a, it's almost like a un understated, unstated uh, uniform color being black. And uh, if you go to any uh, upscale beauty salon or if you go to a, um, an upscale restaurant, most of the servers will at least be in black or very dark pants. And they can have a white shirt usually, but it's, it's, things are monochromatic is what I want to say. It's either white or black. Uh, very rarely khaki or maybe a, a navy blue, but most of the time it's black and white. And it just, it's a simplistic color. It doesn't make you stand out in the crowd. And that's basically what you want to do. You don't want to be um, stared at and looked upon as, well, why is she wearing neon green or 
um, orange or pink or blue or polka dots or whatever. You're not there to call attention to yourself. You're there to do a job and to blend in. And the easiest way to blend in, especially in a high-end event, is to wear dark clothing. So black being the number one color, usually a top would be a collared shirt, uh, like a polo shirt. So black polo shirt with a collar would be appropriate for a female photographer or a dark blue, you know, if you want to do something. Um, you may have a logo for your company. I do. I do have um, a white polo and a black polo depending on where I'm going. Uh, sometimes for the summertime I will wear a white polo for a wedding, for an outdoor wedding. It um, doesn't draw attention to you. Uh, you do have a small logo that shows that you are the professional photographer with the name of your uh, company, you know, on you. Um, so that way you're not mistaken for one of the guests there with a expensive camera walking around. And that's another thing what you want to make sure is that anyone that really spots you doing your job and your work, just by the way you look and by what you are wearing they will know immediately that you are the designated professional photographer at the premises because the last thing you want to do especially um, and I hate to go back to it again as a female they will just think that you are a family member um, a, a lady that has a good expensive camera that is a, a camera buff that is walking around taking pictures willy-nilly and I've had um, instances where people will shove me to the side. It was at the beginning of my career when I didn't figure all this out and how to dress appropriately, let's just say. I dressed in a dress or I dressed in what other people would wear at that event, thinking to myself, oh, I'm just going to look as one of the guests so I don't kind of call attention to myself. I blend in. Well, that didn't work, ladies, because everyone thought that I was just a lady with a really expensive camera, and I was, you know, running around taking pictures uh, just for the heck of it, for fun. And I literally had men and women stand in front of me uh, and plunk down their bodies and take pictures in front of me as things were happening that I needed to cover. And um, I have had to have a... Um, one of the moms or one of the people that that I was you know photographing for announced to people hey she's the photographer let her get her work done and then the the kids or the people will stay posed in that pose and then you guys can then take pictures once she's done her pictures out of the way actually this happened for a prom yeah so I showed up at this uh, beautiful house and I was just there. I, you know, was dressed appropriately as any other of the moms would be. And uh, they wanted me to take all the shots for the uh, the couples, the prom, you know, uh, girls and guys. And uh, I was not taken seriously. And I started to realize from that day on that what you wear and how you present yourself, and basically even having a logoed shirt that announces you are so ABC photography um, will make a heck of a big difference uh, to everybody and they will step aside as you're taking pictures and then you know you can go on your way and not um, have to deal with nasty people but so anyway getting back your top should be a dark color especially in the winter time if you want to do white go ahead and do white uh, if, if it's an outdoor it's gonna be very hot you certainly don't want to be sweating and having the the heat of the sun beating down on you on a dark clothing. But keep it monochromatic, keep it white, keep it black, maybe dark blue. Uh, things that don't call attention. Wear a logo if you if you can have one if it's appropriate to. If not, just keep it monochromatic. Yes. Bottoms. So I very rarely, very very rarely wear a skirt of any kind during a photo event and I would maybe only wear a skirt to a very religious uh, Jewish event um, because it is not appropriate for women uh, to wear slacks at all but it would have to be a very very high high Hasidic or religious Jewish event where I would basically be told 
not to show up in pants because no woman is in pants. Um, and again, I would wear a dark uh, skirt and it will have to be below my knee, mid-calf even. Um, nothing that you will trip over. It won't be that long, but certainly not short at all. You do not want to be bending over, bending down, crouching, uh, doing any type of photography with a skirt that is not an appropriate length because ladies, we don't want to show, you know, our privates out there. I mean, maybe some people do, but I certainly don't want to call attention in that way, especially when I'm shooting. So um, definitely if you must wear a skirt because um, your customer deems it appropriate, then go ahead and wear a skirt that is not too body tight and it is certainly below your knees and you know uh, a longer length uh, for modesty okay that that's the appropriate word modesty you should think of the modesty aspect even in your profession when you are doing photography I myself wear either uh, black khakis or dark khakis I can even go ahead in some circumstances and uh, wear black jeans um, I can certainly wear black leggings if they are not, you know, too tight and they're not hoochie mama leggings. They're just, you know, know your body type, obviously. If you don't want to uh, squeeze yourself into leggings or squeeze yourself into something that's very tight, go ahead and just buy some uh, really nice khakis, some dark khakis, dark blue, um, black, anything that matches, you know, with your top. And uh, make sure you wear a belt. Uh, belts are important because when you bend down again when you're crouching down to get low especially when you're trying to get children uh, photographs of children etc you're bending over bending low you don't want to show the crack you don't want to show anything that will cause disruption to the event uh, cause uh, people to snicker behind your back and obviously your professionalism ranking will go way down um, you know as they say the plumbers crack you know you, you don't want that okay so again um, I'm reading my notes here shoes I th this is a 100% um, if you can f if you can't find um, dark sneakers or black sneakers there are there's a company I I love and I have about two or three pairs of their shoes uh, I have a clog and then I have some Mary Janes. They are called Safe T, S A F E, and then hyphen T. The Safe T shoes. And they are uh, the type of shoes that most service people wear. So a lot of waiters in restaurants wear that. Um, a lot of uh, people that are on their feet for long, long periods of time. Um, whether nursing or um, I'm just thinking restaurant, nursing, hotel industry, um, anything that deals with staff and staff that have to remain and on their feet a long time and walk around, the safety shoes are a go-to. I believe they are available at Payless. That is where I have gotten them. They're not very cheap. They're usually about... Um, $38, $39 and up, depending on the type of uh, shoe that you're getting. Um, they come with a really good grip on the, on the bottoms, so they are made to not slip in water or oil or anything. They are really also for kitchen, kitchen shoes. Um, staffing in the kitchen wear safety shoes all the time. If you can get the ones with the hard uh, toe in the front, that's great. If you don't want to, um, it's not a it, it's not a, a all important thing uh, for photography. You're not really in construction, so if you don't want to get the really hard toed uh, shoes, you don't have to. But certainly, look into the safety shoes. Do not wear open toe shoes. Do not wear sandals. And ladies, do not wear heels above maybe an inch. Inch and a half is stretching it. You do not want to be teeter-tottering on high heels, um, toting around your camera, toting around your backpack, toting around your um, tripod, or anything else that you need to do. 
uh, in heels. You some like I have to. I have to climb on some little stairs to get higher. You will have to jump on. I've had to jump on the side of fountains to get the height. Uh, to catch that shot. I've been on top of um, uh, chairs. I've been on top of a table if I had to. Um, so I'm constantly climbing, going up and down, getting different angled shots. And the last thing you need to do is to be twisting your ankle because you have high heels on. It's just not going to work. And you're going to miss the shot and no one's going to be angrier than your customers because they want that all important shot and you're going to be teeter-tottering on it. Um, in the winter time, I have been known to wear boots. Again, there are ankle boots and then there are higher, higher, you know, up boots, calf boots. Um, again, not a high heel. I prefer, if I can find them, I will get actual riding boots, actual like English riding boots. Um, I think Ralph Lauren has really good boots uh, like that. They're certainly low on the heel. Again, nothing above really an inch on the heel. Riding boots by nature are a low heel boot. They do have a hard toe in the front. Uh, they're very safe. I love them. Um, they are usually soft leather. Again, very comfortable to be on your feet. So that, again, aside from the safety shoe, the only other shoe that I would deem appropriate to wear during certain um, seasons is a is a really good boot so um, make sure it tucks in you know uh, if your leggings and obviously it'll tuck in if you're wearing khakis or um, a, a bigger bottom you know on the bottom of the of the leg uh, make sure that the it can fit over the boot uh, again not outlandish colors uh, stick to a dark brown stick to a black boot um, you know the sparkly leave the sparkly gold boots uh, for discoing at home don't don't not appropriate for what you're doing okay so that that takes care of shoes Toss. makeup okay makeup um, again anything that calls attention to you in in the way of being out there um, I don't feel is appropriate it's that the time to make a statement about your individualism is really usually not while you are getting paid for work as a photographer. Keep your makeup to, you know, basics, first of all. Second of all, when you are outdoors, and especially in the summertime, you are going to be sweating like a hog um, in a matter of a few minutes. So the last thing you want is, you know, your non-waterproof mascara smearing down your eye because you know your eye is up against the lens in the back you will be getting your raccoon eyes around here um, if you have any uh, foundation or you know even with oily skin as soon as you're putting your face next to the lens to the back of the camera you will be smearing all of your foundation that oil will be on the back of your um, camera display which will make it that much harder to see um, if you're chipping as they call chipping if you're taking a picture and then looking at it each time I guarantee you you will not see um, great results on your pictures with the smear of makeup to, on the back of the lens it's just not gonna you know the display is just not gonna work uh, so you don't need to be wiping your um, your face all the time and blotting it because of foundation and makeup running all over the place because you're outdoors and sweating and it's hot so keep it to a minimal keep it to things that are waterproof um, if you need to blot or powder obviously especially if you have oily skin and it's shiny and it's coming through because of the heat go ahead and you know take a moment to blot go into a bathroom and put tissue on there and blot it down but Anything excessively um, makeup y, uh, just uh, don't do it for that day, okay? In the wintertime, um, well, in the summertime, obviously, sunscreen. You will be outdoors. You will be outdoors for a number of hours in, you know, with the highest of heat and the highest of sun. So do wear sunscreen, um, definitely, because you are going to be beet red or 
burn to a crisp by the time the event is done. So definitely do sunscreen. Even in the winter time, if you're outdoors a lot and it's um, it's a, a shoot of some sort that's outdoors, go ahead and put some sunscreen on because you will need it even in the winter time. The sun will get you know to your face and you know you'll just get all blotchy and nobody wants to see you blotchy. Makeup jewelry. Um, same goes for jewelry. Keep it. Uh, don't don't wear. Um, okay, let's start with your earrings. Don't wear dangly earrings that will get caught in anything that you're doing or putting close to your face. Obviously, you're going to have, if you have um, your camera or if you, if you wear a strap of some sort to keep your camera steady or on your body, you don't need it to be around your ear as you're doing your camera and it going crazy all over, you know, getting caught. Um, your hair, please keep it back if you can. If you have longer hair, um, I usually do my little bun thing. It's um, kind of showed you this. Just happened to have it today up. Um, this looks really cute, uh, especially going around. Um, if you have straighter hair, put it in a beautiful, you know, bun on the top. Maybe put a little uh, ribbon or a couple of um, um, pretty little uh, sticks, you know, stick pins in it. Um, or just a ponytail if you want to just braid it down your back if you have longer hair. Uh, try not to have your hair um, loose, flying around. <coughs> Sorry, I'm talking so much here. I need to grab some water. Hang on a second. <music>